Hello, and welcome to more Nerdy Rodent Geekery. Imagine this. You've just finished exploring the world of SDXL control nets, and now, just when you thought things couldn't get any more exciting, Stability AI drops a bombshell with their latest release, Control Laura. Hold on to your seats, folks, because today we're diving headfirst into this cutting edge technology. But first, let's see what Stability AI has to say about it. By adding low rank parameter efficient fine tuning to ControlNet, we introduce Control LoRa's. This approach offers a more efficient and compact method to bring model control to a wider variety of consumer GPUs. Sounds pretty cool, right? Now you may be wondering what's in this release. Well, they've given us a treasure trove of models, each with rank 256 and rank 128 files. These files are significantly smaller than the original full-size control nets, with the rank 256 LoRa's still currently being in the experimental phase. These LoRa's are divided into two categories. First, we have the depth and canny. As you can see, there's depth and there is canny edge. But then we've also got these two, photograph and sketch colorizer. The dynamic duo for adding color back to black and white images. Recolor works its magic on photos while sketch adds life to drawings. But wait, there's more. At the bottom of the rabbit hole, we've got revision. This feature allows you to produce images that are conceptually similar to the ones you input. And here's the kicker, you don't even need prompts, though they can be included if you like. They've added some clip vision nodes and a blending function to combine multiple image or text concepts. Now, before we go any further, let's make sure you're ready to rock and roll. Ideally, you should be fairly familiar with Comfy UI, but if not, don't fret, just check out my previous Comfy UI videos and get up to speed. So here's the game plan. In addition to an up-to-date install of Comfy UI, you'll need a few other essentials. First, download the control LoRa's. Assuming you're using the default locations, start by downloading the Safe Tensors LoRa files into your Comfy UI control net directory. And for extra organizational points, create a new control LoRa directory in there as well. On the files and versions tab is where you'll find those files. There's the rank 128 and the rank 256. Just click in there and then download each of those into that newly created control LoRa directory. You'll also want to grab the Control LoRa workflows. So again, click on that and download each of those as well. Personally, I like to save workflows in a workflows directory, but that's up to you. And here's the secret source for revision. You're going to need everything in that revision directory. That means downloading both of those workflows and also the clip vision G safe tensors file into the clip vision directory in your comfy UI models. Now, let's talk about Comfy UI Manager. If you don't have it already, it's a good idea to install that now. This handy tool will help you identify the custom nodes you need, such as Stability AI Comfy nodes and Comfy UI post processing nodes and all that sort of stuff. Basically, follow the instructions that suit your setup. For example, here, I'm using the general installation method. I've CD'd into my custom nodes directory, and then when I run the git clone command, that will download everything I've run this already, hence the message on screen about it already being there. Once you've got everything in place, fire up Comfy UI, and you'll be able to load a workflow and install any missing nodes with ease. If you see any error messages and red nodes, no worries. You can just open up Manager, select Install Missing Custom Nodes, and restart Comfy UI, and hopefully all your errors will vanish. Let's just have a quick go at doing that now. So I'm going to load one of those custom workflows. I've got them saved over here in Stability AI. Let's load a recolor one, have a look at, oh, we've got an error. What's going on there? Color blend, that's missing. So we'll go over to the manager, we'll click install missing custom nodes. That's saying, oh, okay, this one is missing. So you just click install on that, that will install and then restart Comfy UI and all those errors will vanish. Just in case it does have any issues detecting the missing nodes, it's these top four here that you will need for this. The Comfy UI Manager obviously is this, then the stability, the processors there, and the processors there as well. 
All right, folks, it's now time to unveil the wonders of Control Lauras. Let's start with Canny Edge. Now, remember to hit refresh, so that will update all the models that you've got. Drop an image in over here, so let's do that now. There we go, I've got a new image in there. Then the Canny Edge preprocessor will do its magic. You'll get a preview and the final output. Of course, that's all guided by the prompt as well, so I should get a portrait of a man wearing a hat sitting in the park. Let's cue that up and, and see what comes out. Alrighty, it looks like we've got the man wearing a hat, but there's not much of a park in the background. If that's something you want, then you'll need to lower the strength of these so your prompt can have a bit more power. Let's drop that to 0 0.75 and we'll drop that down to 0 0.6, rerun and see what happens then. There we go, that's much better. So now we've got the park in the background as well as the man wearing a hat. Now that's using the Canny 256 model by default, but does it make any difference if we switch to the 128? So let's pop that one in. I've got a fixed seed there. So if I regenerate that, it should be fairly similar. And yes, indeed, there are some slight differences there, but it is indeed very much the same. Now let's dive into the depths. It's one of my personal favourites for shaping images. The Midas depth map at the top there, that node puts the power in your hands with its preprocessor controls. Again, you may wish to change the strength and end percentage depending on what you want to come out. So let's have a look at those defaults and see what happens there. I should get a portrait of a man wearing a tuxedo standing on a fjord. There he is, man wearing a tuxedo. Again, no fjord, but if you drop the strength and end percentage, that will give you the extra creativity. Next up, we have Recolor. This workflow is perfect for adding life back to black and white photos. Just drop one in there like I've done, fix any of these spelling mistakes, and then watch the magic happen. All right, that's pretty nice. Well, it's it's got some interesting rainbow colors going on there, and it seems to think her hairband is actually hair, but nevertheless, I think that's done a very nice job. Now, sketch is a little bit trickier, as you do have to manipulate your prompts to get any decent results out of here, and once again, altering the strength and start and end percentages. But here we've got a cute little alien creature saying hi, and the scribble preprocessor, you don't get any options to change that. So let's see what this does. And there we go, it's taken the black and white scribble and turned it into a colourful little alien creature saying hi, hi. Hopefully that's all been fairly straightforward so far, making it time to take a look at revision. This one I really like, as it is both simple and works really well. This basic example to start with is essentially image variation. Now be aware this generates four variations by default there. We've got a batch size of four. So if you're wondering why it's taking a little bit longer, it's generating four images. So let's throw a badger in there and see what variations we can get on that. Interesting. Well, I don't have lots of badgers. I do have animals and they're all different. I don't even know what that is. That's definitely a dog. We've got another dog there and another dog there. So it's noticed it's an animal, although I did rather want some badgers. Okay, how about if I throw a line art person in there instead? What will that generate? Oh, cool. I've got lots of line art people. That's nice. So that means it tries to follow both the style and the subject of your input image. The other revision workflow has two input images, load image A and load image B. So let's mix that line art person with some, I don't even know what that is, but it's a sort of colourful photograph. Whoa, I don't know what I was expecting, but I wasn't expecting that. I, I think they're actually pretty cool. It's done quite a good job of sort of mixing line art with that photograph. Very nice. So as you can see, there's certainly loads of fun to be had with revisions. But you know what's even more fun? This next Nerdy Rodent video.